Welcome back to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes. And for this full-time bulletin, I'm joined by Kev McCloskey. It finished sensationally, Kev. Rangers 3, Celtic 3. Unbelievable game. It went backwards and forwards. Rangers came into the ascendancy in that second half. Pulled it right back to 2 each. Celtic get their noses in front. And then we lose that late, late goal and it's 3 each. It was an incredible game of football. We've got to, we've got to look at it. I know it's difficult. Um, we're going to have to pinpoint moments of the game that we could have done so much better in as well, though, Kev. I mean, in particular, their third goal, their equaliser. We've got to defend it. Listen, sensational finish. Unbelievable finish, right? You've got to be fair. But we've got to defend that better. Yang is weak when Matondo skips past him and, and, and basically strikes. But what a game. What a second half. There's an air of disappointment, no, Kev? Excuse me. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, I, uh, I, would, I would guess if you were a neutral, this was an absolutely fantastic game. And it's, uh, it's a brilliant advent for Scottish football. You know, it's a much maligned product. But that game today had a bit of everything about it. There was uh, one team dominating the first half and then the other team coming back and having the better of the second. There were some incredible goals. And yeah, you have to... Hold your hands up to it and say Matondo's finish at the end was it was simply stunning. Um, wish he hadn't done it right enough, and we could have stopped it. It was a fantastic goal, but the game itself was just it was electric. You know, I said at half time I was struggling to catch breath watching that first forty. First forty five, as you can tell, I'm still struggling to catch breath after the second. It was it was an incredible game. Um, and you can't help but come away from it with a sense of disappointment because we had that two-goal lead. I'm sure we'll talk about it, but there's the way that we lose that lead of the, yeah. uh, the deficit is halved, uh, which is a, a major talking point in the game. But positives from that as well, after losing the lead, we did show major strength of character to come back and it looked like Ida had written himself into folklore with a winning goal and he's Glasgow Derby debut. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but it means that we've got, what, six games left. Everything's still to play for. It's still in our hands, um, which is what we wanted at the end of today. As long as it was still in our hands, I think we're in a, a good place. And for the time being, it is. So um, we'll take the next half an hour or so. We'll try and catch our breath and reflect on this. But what, excuse me, what an afternoon of football it's been. And I had to in the wee room at the back because it was too loud celebrating either school. <laughs> well, I don't know what anybody thinks about me from a, about a three-mile radius, kid, because I was going absolutely <laughs> bonkers. Um, we will talk about the first half. I understand a lot of people don't tune in at half time and they want to, they, they want to hear the discussion regarding the entire game. Um, I don't want to use the cliche. First half, we were outstanding. We were brilliant in that first half. Mm -hmm. We were controlled. The tempo was was really high. We were pressing high up the park, Kev, you know. We were getting Tavernier on his back foot because I don't think he's a good defender. He's, he's excellent going forward. I mean, finished the, the penalty off really, really well. He's pretty good at hitting a ball from 12 yards with no challenge. Mm -hmm. But in terms of his defensive capabilities, he doesn't have them. Um, and I think we've done really well to get the ball down the left and we did it quickly. At half time, there weren't a, a great deal um, there, there weren't a great many concerns for us to discuss. I think we picked out the fact that Awata was poor in possession at times, but he, he grew in the game in the first half. I think that was a feature of the second half as well, Kev. Now, I'm, I'm going to start off by speaking about this, the, the midfield situation because we've got a player in Hatati who is you know, building his, his match sharpness back up, Kev. He's only had one 90-minute game of football. And last week, I remember in the comment section, someone saying to me that was a concern because all the focus is on McGregor. But let's not forget, Hatati's only had one game in the tank. I thought Hatati was excellent, by the way. But a lot of the running was being done by Matt O'Reilly. And I think, actually, if you look at it, Kev, seeing the last 20 minutes of the game, it was no surprise that, that O'Reilly had to come off. And that was due to the fact that he probably ran more than anybody else on the park. He was having a better game than a water. But I think he was done. 
I think he was leggy, and Bernardo has to come into the play. So you look at the the after effects or, or the secondary effects of the fact that Hatati's only had one game of football, the captain McGregor's on the bench. I think a big part of that burden fell on the shoulders of Matt O'Reilly. Yeah, I think that's one of the drawbacks of having Rio in the team. You know, as strange as it sounds to say that there can be a drawback of having a player of such natural ability in the team, it is that he doesn't really pull his weight defensively. And sometimes, excuse me, sometimes the guys around him are having to do a wee bit extra legwork to cover for him. And when he's coming back from injury, you know, I don't know if he's really fit yet. Um, and, and maybe that's part of it as well. He just he doesn't put in the shift. And in a game like today, you need everybody in the midfield, I think, kind of doing that and pulling their weight. Um, so, yeah, O'Reilly's the one that steps up and does that extra leg work. thought he was fantastic in the first half. Uh, he covers so much ground. He was really composed in the ball. Tried a few probing passes that just didn't come off. It was obviously that penalty. It's been, you know, we'll talk about that for years to come, probably. Um, but yeah, he does. He tires towards the end and into that second half. Because again, I don't like to say these things. Give Rangers a wee bit of, uh, I don't know, respect is the word, but give them credit where it's due. We'll say that they did. They had to come out in the second half and really press us and push us. They couldn't afford to have a, a second half that was as poor as their first. Um, and I don't know if maybe we got caught out a little bit by that, by a, a rise, rising intensity from them. But they definitely, um, they were chasing the game. They were pushing us back. They were doing some of the things that we were doing well in the first half. And yeah, it was obvious that the midfield was going to tire. That said, I think I think the subs that Brendan made were the right ones at the right time. He took Rio off when he was becoming ineffective in the game and brought on McGregor, who you would think would be that common influence in there. And then later on, he's taken O'Reilly off and brought Bernardo on as well, because again, he's the guy that's got that ability to close the passing lanes and have the high work rate. And I'd say he comes on for the last 10 minutes, but it's more like the last 20 minutes with all that stoppage time at the end. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a good point here, actually, and I think it's got to be to, me, to be mentioned, Loopy 33, that the wind was very, very strong. And I think, you know, we got the benefit of that in the first half. Rangers got the benefit in the second half. We will talk about referees' decisions. Um, we'll have a chat about the first half, moving into the second half. Rangers were booed off the park at half time. They had to come out. They had no... Uh, they absolutely had no option than to come out and try and, and clutch something back. We went in 2 nothing up. I felt the first half was really, really good. About the only guy that I had slight concerns about above um, Awata losing the ball too often was probably Kuhn. I, I thought that Kuhn, um, I don't, I'm not going to say he looked out his depth. I just don't think that he did enough in the first half, Kev, whereby I was confident at half time that he'd really grasped this, this fixture. We spoke before the game, didn't we, about the fact that the Celtic fans cheering the team away from Celtic Park yesterday. You know, you've got the guys in that bus who know what it's all about. You've got other ones like Ida. And I know that, obviously, growing up in Ireland, Ida would have uh, known all about Celtic, right? Uh, and Kuhn has been at some big clubs, never really quite made it. And we spoke about that during the week as well. I don't think Kuhn had a, a very good game. I think he got a, a cheap uh, booking. And then there was a, it was a case of when is he coming off? Some people in the comments saying he was an empty jersey. He didn't have his best game. Um, and I think in the first half, if you're going to have a good game, that first half of football was when you were going to have it. But in his defence, we did have much more traffic down the left-hand side, didn't we? I think 55% of our attack and play in the first half was down the left, Kev. Um, there was a there was obviously a percentage down the middle, very little, something like thirteen percent down the right hand side. So we've gone into the uh, half time break, two goals to the good. You're looking at that, thinking right, next goal. I know again, cliched, next goal is going to be huge in terms of the outcome of the game. Um, the handball, the VAR check. You're looking at that. You're thinking Brendan Rodgers has told you, John Beaton, that you're the, one of the best in the game, um, and you know it's. He's gone and had a look at that. He's given the right decision. Um, and Matt O'Reilly, with, with absolute tenacity and, and, and panache and everything else, um, no arrogance, supreme confidence. And he takes that penalty and it's 2 nothing up. At that point, I'm thinking, we can win this 3 nothing. Um, we, we go into half-time 
thanks to Joe Hart, 2 nothing up, because he's pulled off a, a magnificent double save. In the second half, then, you know, you've got Silva getting booked for diving. And this is where it all starts to unravel, Kev, right? So Silva, for me, has probably dived two or three times in the game. And beating's flashed a yellow. Straight off the bat, that's a dive, pal. Right. This is where there's going to be big discussion points, Kev, because we've been speaking about um, referees' decisions all season. I'm thinking he's got to be strong. He's been called over to the monitor, right? So VAR are telling him there's been a clear and obvious error in your decision-making here. Come and have a look. And he goes over, and I'm, I'm looking at it again and again and again. I'm not seeing a penalty, Kev. Now, listen, the green tinted specs are off. I am not seeing any kind of contact that is going to result and someone being brought down. And I think Beaton got it right on the park. I think the decision was made wrong, having watched the, the footage back on the monitor. What's your take on it? I think I think he called it right at the time. I think it's a clear dive. Uh, and it's it's a major, major talking point in the game because of what it means, what it results in. Um, there's a moment in the first half, I've got it down, is around about 39 minutes when... Johnson gets his booking and it's that kind of off the ball incident with Fabio Silva. He checks his run. It's a coming together. It's a kind of chest on chest, almost a chest into shoulder kind of thing. Uh, Silva goes down clutching his face. He's trying to get Johnson sent off. On 39 minutes, 2 0 with Celtic in the ascendancy. He's at it. I think he's been at it before that. He's had a couple of wee dives or he's gone down easy. He's completely at it at that moment. And Beaton's across, and to be fair to John Beaton at that one, he's just telling him to get up. I know it's a foul, but just get up and play on. It's, it's not as bad as you're making it out to be. So when it comes to that incident at the start of the second half, I thought, again, well done, John Beaton. You've stood up to this. You've, you know, you've not fallen for it. It is a dive. But as soon as it goes over to the, the monitor, you can be pretty sure that it's only going one way. Now, I'm pretty sure we've watched the same footage of the game. So we're seeing the exact same VAR monitor footage that John Beaton's seen. The first five times I think you see the incident, it's only the contact of Johnson's leg on uh, Silva's knee. There is contact, eh? we can't deny it, there's contact. Silva's already gone down by that point. But the first five views would make you think, contact, penalty. Then there's a couple of quicker views of the, the full incident. And you see Johnson wins the ball. His right foot touches the ball. Silver's on his way down. Then there's contact. Yep. It's a dive. He falls before he's hit. Yep. It's that old one anticipating the contact so you go down before it comes. Well, that's a dive. Chris Sutton's called cheating. Kenny Miller has said it's not a penalty. Ian Crocker has said... I think we know how this one's going. It's not going to be a penalty. He's given the penalty. No one, apart from John Beaton and... I'm sorry, I can't remember who the VAR ref is. Walsh, Alan. Nick Walsh. Walsh, Nick Walsh. They're the only two people that have, that have thought that's a penalty. It's, it's, it's never a me, penalty, Kev. Never a penalty. Embarrassing I mean, to call it. It's, it's ridiculous. And it changes the flow of the game. So it changes the flow of the game because that gives them all the impetus that they need. Again, if we can go through 10 minutes without conceding a goal at the start of the half, I'm, I'm confident we win the game. Yeah. But that changed everything. And then they almost pull level 60 seconds later. And we were, you know, it was heart and mouth again as well as to whether we would make the right call and disallow that goal. See the thing, a couple of things on this, right? This is not about saying this is the only reason that we didn't win this game because I'm, I'll criticise Yang for being so, so weak in defence. I'll criticise Callum McGregor for losing the ball in the first place. I'll criticise Nicholas Kuhn for shrinking um, after a good run of form. You know, these are things that you look at. I'll criticise Awata for losing the ball far too often throughout the game, but in particular in the second half. I'll do all these things, Kev, but I'll also criticise the decisions that are made. Now, you're spot on in what you say with Silva. He could have been booked, and, I, and he would have had no arguments in the first half for diving. He could have been booked. Football isn't a non-contact sport, right? So there's your first point. The contact of Johnson's boot to Silver's leg 
wasn't what made him fall. He was already down. He had already, Johnston had already made contact with the ball. Beaton got it right. He got it spot on. And then he got it wrong when he went to the monitor. But what then happened, Kev, right? See the goal that Rangers then score. And Awata is clearly fouled in the lead up to that gate, that goal. I'm not sure what John Beaton's going to do there if he hadn't given the decision against Celtic previously. Because he, he was backed into a corner. There was more contact on Awata and there was more force on Awata than there had been on Silva. So he's forced to cut that, chop that goal off, Kev, simply because he has given Rangers um, you know, the, the opportunity just moments before to get a penalty. So I, I think that in terms of the refereeing decisions, I think it's a big part of the discussion. I don't want to labour it. I think you've always got to do your own thing correct and pro and that wasn't a perfect performance with Celtic, 100% miles off being a perfect performance, a brilliant first half, but in terms of the refereeing, that was really really poor, and again, going into the game, Brendan Rodgers spoke about John Beaton said, obviously that he was one of the best in the country, we've spoken about the way and the approach that Brendan had in relation to that, what else could he say you know, he's already been up at the disciplinary beaks for saying what he really thinks um, but going into this game, you're thinking to yourself, right, first half um, I think Celtic players were booked too easily and this is something that you have mentioned in the past Kev with regards to you give somebody a, and, and in particular your centre half you give them a booking in the first half and they're you know they're treading on eggshells for the rest of the game anything yeah. anything can I actually happen think, I actually think that's a major factor in Kuhn's performance he's booked after 20 minutes yeah. and I think in that opening 20 minutes he's maybe not got the better sterling that often but he's shown a willingness to try and take him on and and get involved in a couple of wee tackles to try and win the ball back. As soon as he's booked, he knows he can't lose the ball to him again because of his nature, he's going to want to try and stick a boot in and win the ball back. And I think that affected him a lot. I think it was early booking just disrupted his flow. Um, you know, whether that is part of the, the, the patterns of assistance, I don't know. But it's it's certainly something, in my opinion, anyway, that kind of it hindered his performance. But you are right as well to say that, right? Like, after the incidents occurred, after they've gone 2 1 up, sorry, after they've made it 2 1, there is still 35, 40 minutes of football to play. Mm -hmm. And we should have been able to regroup and reorganise and control the game a little bit better, a lot better than we did, because in fairness, we didn't control the second half. See, when Awat has been taken down and uh, Dessler's goal is disallowed rightly and correctly uh, by John Beaton, um, I think that at that point, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the team that I'm looking at the intensity of Rangers at that stage, Kev. And I know it's a wee bit maybe a wee bit earlier than Brendan would have liked, but at that point I'm thinking we need to start making some substitutes here because I do think that you've got the uh, the issue with uh, Kuhn who's not really performed. The, the problem I've got with this is it takes us the best part of ten minutes to make the changes. Um Hatati was at that point really blown, um, looking leggy, the, the change had to be made. You're obviously bringing on McGregor at that stage. It's difficult at that point to start criticising the gaffer. McGregor made a couple of errors. Of course he did. But at that point, that's the right change, I think. And when you're looking at Kuhn, that's the right change. I just think it should have happened a wee bit sooner. But before we get to the changes, because um, Brennan Rodgers has been criticised again for some of the decision-making, I think you've got to look at the fact that for the goal, right, you look at the, you know, the, the assist comes from Bernardo and Celtic's third goal, and the goal comes from Ida. And at that point, you're thinking, we've won this game. And it's two substitutes. It's two subbies that have come on and created the goal. So you can criticise, but at the same time, you know, I think, Kuhn, do you keep him on? No chance. He wasn't playing well, and he wasn't going to start playing well at that stage of the game. Hatate, you're probably aware going into the game, Kev, that he's playing for 60 to 65 minutes. So he's coming off, and he looked knackered. O'Reilly, when, when O'Reilly came off, he had to come off because he'd been doing a lot of the running for Hatati for the best part of an hour. I don't have the stats in terms of the kilometres covered by the Celtic team, but I'm going to put money on the fact that O'Reilly will be up there. He's probably ran more yards than anybody else. Prior to uh, these discussion points, there were comments leading into this game um, by a high-profile um, pundit, an ex-Rangers player, Alan McCoy, about you know the, the hate bill and the singing. And I think that, you know, just after the object's been thrown at the Celtic dugout, again, 
right, which shows why Celtic refused to take a couple of hundred tickets because it's not a safe environment actually to be in. And once again, it's proven because objects are thrown at the Celtic dugout. We heard the chant. We heard the chant, Kev. Um, and we all know what I'm talking about. And, you know, they are doubting your parentage and there is a sectarian slur. And we heard it as clear as day. 50,000 Rangers fans singing it. It's going to get done about that. We shall see how that's going to be dealt with. So, McCoy, you got your wish. You got your wish. Um, and the 50,000 fans singing that song, or, or the Rangers fans amongst the 50,000 singing that song, have committed a hate crime. What's going to be done about that? Right. So the changes are made. Um, and I think that there was a few occasions, again in the second half, where Scales done a wee bit of the water and they gave the ball away far too often, cheaply. But the flip side for me, Kev, he won a lot of balls. He, he, seriously, defensively, you know, go and put your head on that, go and tackle, go and block, intercept. He's doing that time and time again. Carter Vickers was outstanding in doing that as well, very, very late in the game. But sometimes the distribution lets him down, Kev. Scales I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 it does. Um, I touched on it a little bit at half time, but I didn't want to be too negative then because the first half had been so good. But yeah, I've got I've got notes kind of scattered across my notes. Whenever Scales has got the ball and he's trying to bring it out, he just takes so much time on it. He's so laborious, and then he gets caught in possession maybe three or four times, which just puts us under pressure. But he's taking too long to play a forward pass that he turns and plays it back, and again we're under pressure. That side of his game really needs to improve, uh, especially for these kind of games, because you just don't get away with it. But the other side of his game, the defensive side, because my other notes on him are like, just defend. And that's what he does. When he just defends, he's he's excellent, or at least he was today. I don't think there was a, a cross ball that he went for that he missed. I don't think there was an interception that he went for that he missed. He Every time he went for the ball, he was getting it. He was... When he was clearing his lines first time and early, he was generally doing it pretty well. But when we've got the ball and we're trying to play it out, and he's taking those few wee steps forward, there, there is, it's not so much a heart and mouth, but you just start to think, just play the pass, just do something, because he'll, he'll get caught sooner or later. But on the whole, I don't think you can really have too many faults with him, because I think his defensive side of his game was good, and that's what he's there to do. I mean, Carter Vickers was just... Typical cat of Vickers. You know, he is a colossus. He's a rock at the back. He's winning again. Everything else that's coming out of the box, he's getting something on the end of it. Pretty much, he's uh, he take a few hefty tackles as well during the game, but he just seems to get back up and go through it. Uh, I thought the two of them were both really good. Um, don't really think they're they're at fault for any of the goals that we've lost. Uh, and that's, despite losing three goals, that's, that's a good positive to take from it, that you've actually got, again, a centre-back pairing that you're beginning to a wee bit of trust and confidence in. I'm not going to give Scales a hard time because over the piece this season, right, Liam Scales has come in for a lot of criticism. But if, and I've said this, he, he's kept out Lagerbjelk, he's kept out Nabroski, £7.3 million pounds worth of purchases. And he's doing that because of his work, at, obviously, at training that we don't see. And he's doing it because of uh, the, the fact that Brendan Rodgers is satisfied with his performances, Kev. And Rodgers thinks he's better than the two aforementioned centre-halves who cost us a lot of money. I still think we can do better, personally. I, I am a fan of skills, but I put him in the same bracket as Greg Taylor and Tony Ralston. I think we can do better than skills. I think we can do better than Taylor. You know, And I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with that. Because if you want to improve, you want two Carter Vickers at centre-half. If you want to prove, improve, you want two goals in your team. You know, you want you want two, mid, two midfielders that have got the class of Matt O'Reilly or the playmaking ability of Rio Attack. You need that all over the park. And I just think that, you know what, at the end of the season, you'll look at Scales' season and say, where did that come from? But we can do better. I'm not going to have, make him a scapegoat, right? I'm going to look at the three goals we lost today and see were they avoidable, right? The first one, penalty kick. Was it a penalty? No. Right. So I will criticise the officials for that, you know, to the nth degree because it was a shocking decision. And as someone in the comments has already mentioned, you're actually rewarding Silver for being a cheat because that's what he is. And he cheated his way all the way through the game. 
The second goal, Callum McGregor, that's on you, pal. The third goal, Yang, you can stop that despite the finish being brilliant. Get your body in front of him. You know what annoyed me about Yang? He didn't even make an effort. He just stood there, flat-footed Kev. And, and by the way, he's got a lot to do and he does it well. Can't blame Joe Hart for it. But there's two goals there that where we can do better. We take responsibility for that, Kev. And I think that's where the disappointment comes in because, you know, if you win the game 2-1 and that's a dodgy penalty, we can talk about that all day. And Rangers fans are probably feeling hard done by because they'll, they'll be thinking that their second goal should have stood. But it, no, the, the game went beyond that. What I would say, though, in relation to um, the aftermath of that particular game, they were, and Paul says it here, Paul 67, they were celebrating the draw as if they'd won the league. You know, they, they're thinking the, it's game over. Let's go back to the Brendan Rodgers comments leading into this game. He says, you know, if we lose the game, the league's not over. You know, he's long enough in the tooth to know, Kev. It would have felt like it, incidentally. When all is said and done, a three-each draw at Ibrox is fine. We can, listen, we can handle that in terms of our run yeah. if we just keep our own backyard in order. But we need to take responsibility. Always call out the bad refereeing decisions. Absolutely. But we also need to take responsibility for the fact that we gave away two goals that were preventable. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Uh, if, if we lose this game today, or if, we, if we've lost it, then obviously we're going to be sitting here completely gutted and disappointed. But if we even then dared to say, probably, that we can still win the league, we'll be accused of being happy clappers. You know, that's, that's just how it goes. Yeah. Today wasn't ever going to decide it either way. It was going to give one team a better chance if they'd won. And the draw leaves it still very much wide open. Um, it's still within our hands, which is the thing we said at the top of this show. It's still within our hands. We win the next six league games to close out the season and we'll win the league. And now that is very easy to say. It's not so very easy to do, but that's the reality of it. It's still within our own hands to do it. I think both teams will probably end up dropping points between now and the end of the season. And I think the next Glasgow Derby at Celtic Park is the one that probably decides it. But it was never going to be today. It was still going to, it was just going to lessen our chances if we lost. But like I say, a draw keeps it very much alive and still all to play for. Um, and yeah, if we want to talk about the goals again, exactly, we've been doing this all season. You know, we've come on here and we're not looking to make excuses for anything. So the first goal, I think 99.9% .9 of people that have seen that penalty incident will say it's not a penalty. So that one's done right. Let's just move on. The second goal, it's it's completely Callum McGregor's fault. You know, unfortunately you have to say it, it's a really slack pass and then we just don't recover from it at all. But if he looks up, he probably doesn't try and play that pass. He plays something different. It's just really, really slack and it's really unlike him, but we were made to pay for it. And the third goal is the one that I don't really have any sympathy on Yang for at all. I think that's just really, really poor from him. He's uh, he's allowed Matondo to cut inside. He's done that against Hibs last week as well, pretty much the same goal. I think as a... I know he's a winger, but if you're in that defensive position, that right-back position, you want to probably throw the guy down to the, to the byline. You, know, you want to lessen his chances of being able to come in field and, and get into that danger area. But as soon as he steps inside him, I don't know if Yang's scared to touch him because he thinks he goes down and it's a penalty. But he is extremely flat-footed. He lets him go. He doesn't have anybody out there covering with him. So the guy's got a free shot. He does have a lot to do. Uh, and, you know, as much as it pains us all to say it, it's a fantastic finish, but it's an avoidable goal. So I think we can take this, all of these things away from the game and think the league is still ours to win. You know, um, let's say Dundee could beat Rangers in midweek and then we're, you know, we're thought of having played the same amount of games. Let's be positive that way. Uh, even if they don't, it's still in our hands. Win all our games, we'll win the league. Look at the goals that we've lost. At least two of the goals are avoidable. How do we work on preventing them in future games? Well, there's things that we can take away from this. And one of the biggest ones is actually the major positive of we lost a second goal to them for minutes to go. 
and we could have crumbled, but we didn't. We kept on going. He does got himself involved, and we haven't spoken about that goal yet, but what a goal that is as well. As cool as Matt O'Reilly is for his goal, he does ice cold as well with that. It's a good pass into him by Bernardo, but again, he's got loads of work to do because he's got the ball kind of stuck between his feet. Yeah. He's got two defenders on him. I, mean, I think the natural or obvious choice in that one is to go across goal as well to try and angle it to the far post. But he's done the keeper at the near post. It's a brilliant goal. Um, and he deserves a bit of credit for that. And also for his general performance when he came on. He caused Absolutely. problems he at did. a time when we needed a, an out ball up front. So, yeah, many positives. And they can celebrate this as the day they won the league but because it's not. There's so much more football to play between now and the end of the season. I'm happy if that's the attitude, Kev. I really am happy because absolutely. it's, 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 it's the whole the dynamic thing that they've got. Yeah. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. And uh, which which to go back to something you've mentioned before about the songs that they were singing, they felt safe and in to do it where they were. There's an entitlement within them that they can sing those songs and get away with it, that they can openly come out on public platforms and state that they will breach newly passed hate laws. They know what they're doing. It's a crime, it's a criminal offence. Um, but they just don't care. No. And and they also say that no one likes them and don't care, but they obviously do because they're constantly on the comments. And here, first thing in the morning, I'm getting comments on social media from them. You do care. Trey Dickerson says it, silver awarded for cheating. Yeah, he did. He cheated. He absolutely cheated. And I think referees need to be stronger because it's almost as if when you go to that monitor, Kev, you, you know what's coming. It's almost as if they do not want to go against whatever has been said in their year and whatever they've been called over to have a look at. Be stronger. Realise that is never a penalty. Stick to your booking, you know, because you're actually, yeah, you're rewarding a cheat in that instance. Yeah, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Paul, but on that one, um, it's a pantomime, the whole going to the, the VAR screen, because you do know what's happening. Now, I know the system in Hungary, in many ways, is not a perfect system. Neither is the VAR one. But when a referee comes over to check a monitor here, you actually don't know what he's going to give. Right? He will look at it and he will either reverse his decision or he'll stick by it. Right? But you don't know when he goes over. In Scotland, it is a pantomime gesture to go over. He's been told by the VAR, by the virtual referee, what to give. You've and that's not his error. duty. He's been told, you've made an error. Yes. It's clear yeah. and obvious. Come and have a look at it. Ah, but but that's, I mean, it's just an absolute pantomime. So you know what's coming. Um, yeah, but again, on that one, to be fair, I was actually really surprised though, when we did get the, the decision we should have got on the... He was forced to give that decision. Film. He was forced to give that he, because... He was you forced know, to by, by his own actions just a minute before. Absolutely, because it was more of a foul than, than Silva. Um, Stubbs' yes. horse... Their dodgy penalty, let them go. I didn't think Stubbsy was a horseman to go into it. Well done, ref and VAR. I agree with you wholeheartedly, David. And by the way, as I say, we'll criticise where we made our own mistakes. But that was shocking, again, from the referees and the VAR officials. David McConnell, that feels like a defeat for us boys and girls. Um, what happened, man? Uh, what a game. Another reason why this is the best target on earth. Well, you know, I think we could debate that. Uh, separately as well, but I tell you, anybody watching the game um, from the outside looking in, Kev, would have thought, wow, I just think that, you know, the element of throwing objects at the Celtic dugout, which has resulted in people getting jail terms and people having stitches in their head, etc, 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 is still there. What's going to get done about that? And also, the one that was obvious to me, although it may have been getting chanted all the way through the game, was in the 58th minute. Um, and uh, as I say, Alan McCoy, you got your wish. Uh, no day will challenge McCoy, but what they need to do is challenge a 50,000 singing that song. Um, Tony Daverin, thank you for supporting the channel. Love a wee bit of the old retro kit. I'm thinking Stevie Fulton and uh, Mr. Celtic, thank you also for supporting Axon. I'm going to disagree with you though. Liam Scales can't play again this season. Navroski must get a run before the next derby. There's a reason he's on the bench, Kev. Navroski I'm talking about, there's a reason he's on the bench. And the reason is, and Brendan Rodgers, at this point of the season, 
right, where there's only one more derby to play and we're coming into the last half dozen games, he thinks Liam Scales is better. That's the reason. I don't think Scales is getting dropped. I don't think he would get dropped on the power of that performance today. I, I, I'm saying it's not perfect. Absolutely. Some of his passing was poor. There was one occasion where he passed the ball right out of the park. I, I just cannot stand cheaply giving away possession like that. But McGregor cheaply gave away possession for, for Rangers. I'm going to take a few uh, positives from this, game, And what I'm going to take away is, right, OK, the first half performance I thought was excellent. You, you could you could strip it back and you could say Kuhn wasn't great. I want to give the ball away too much. But generally speaking, largely, we were excellent in the first half. I'm also going to say we went to um, Ibrox. Some might call it a six-goal thriller. We were never behind in the game. We were never behind in the mm -hmm. game. And when we got that sucker punch near the end of the game, Kev, there is character shown. Yeah, I know we gave away the lead. You know, a third time we gave away the lead. But there was character shown in getting us back ahead in the game. And Ida needs to be given loads of, um, loads of credit for his performance. I think it gives you something different. It really stretches the back line differently, doesn't it? He? he has got that physical aspect. He'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. Um, a wee bit of the Yakimakis vibe about him in that respect. Great finish. And I think that'll do him the world of good um, as well. And here we go. Lane Vixer, they aren't beating us at Celtic Park. There's the final positive of the day. We just need to be smart the rest of the games. This is what it comes down to, Kev. We need to be smarter. We need to see that game out. Because at that moment, right, where you go 3-2 up, you've got to win the game. I know there's eight minutes to play. I get it. But you've got to be able, you've got to be strong enough to win the game at that point. Um, and that that is something that we, we've got to be aware of in-house. And we need to sort that out in-house and Yang has to be stronger and it's easy now to say Forrest is better defensively than Yang right, okay, Yang came on because he was on form before he got suspended nobody was moaning when Yang came on it's only now that he didn't prevent the goal that we're moaning about it, so we've got to do better um, in certain aspects but all is not lost, as you say Kev, and Rangers are going away to play in a tatty field during the week and we'll see how they fare against Dundee Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. 3,000 strong on the live stream, on the post-match. 3,000 strong. Um, thank you, you every single one though. of you. What, the game? Not no much to discuss, was there? Um, <laughs> we were an hour before the game, 15 minutes and a half time, 30 minutes after the event, almost 40. So thank you all for tuning in. It's always an absolute pleasure on a match day. And as I say, we're trying to find a way uh, where we can beat the game. And also do this because we're always going to cover the games that that is not under any kind of doubt it's not in question but it would also be nice to actually get along and see the action as well and maybe my throat <clears throat> will be a little bit clearer if i'm at the game rather than screaming at a screen um we have been with uh paddy mccourt over the last couple of nights he was sensational it's been great to get a catch up with paddy and the next time we're on the road is with the blessed martin o'neill the final 50 tickets have just been released for our gig with Martin O'Neill in Glasgow. The ticket link is underneath this video. And of all the events that I've done with many, many speakers, he is the finest. He is the absolute finest in the world of Celtic. And we do that accompanied by lots of video footage as well. It's just not watching a, a, a stage. You're also watching the big screen. So we'll get some tunes on the go at halftime as well. Um, come along. And we'll see where we are in the league on the 25th of April when we are speaking to Martin O'Neill. Kev, you got one more thing to say? Or are you saying we'll oh. be top? Yeah, I hope we'll so. We'll be top. I yeah. hope so. Thank you all for supporting a Celtic state of mind. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening. And thank you to Kevin McCluskey for joining me on Axon.